Welcome to the simulation part of our lab 1. In lab 1 we saw how to write a VHDL program to control an LED using a switch or rather two LEDs using two switches. So we have seen what is a test bench already. It is used to test the VHDL code that we write. So since we have written a VHDL code for controlling an LED using a switch, let us test it using a test bench. And to do so, we start by going to our entity name, right clicking on it, clicking on new source, selecting this time not the VHDL module but VHDL test bench. Once we do so, then we have to suggest a file name or rather give a file name. Let the file name be same as the project name. It doesn't matter. The project name could be different and the file name could be different. But here, as a standard, I would always include the keywords TB for test bench. Although this is not compulsory, but it is a general practice to add TB for test bench. Then we click on the button next. And next. And finish. So here, Xilinx software gave us a lot of information already and some code has been written for us for implementing our test bench. In our original code, we did not include any particular clock. So the first task would be to remove all the clocks that have been predefined by Xilinx from the test bench. So, the first task would be to delete line number 62, which has the word clock in it. Then, line number 74 to 81 must also be deleted. Line number 82 must also be deleted, as all these lines had clock written in them but we don't really need clock in this particular project. As in when we'll implement clock, we'll use it in a later part of this course. Today, to test our LED and switches, we write our stimulus. That is, the way we are giving input to our VHDL code or our FPGA hardware but in a simulation point of view. So let us go back and look at the different inputs and outputs that we had in our project. We had two inputs, switch 0 and switch 1. Remember, in a test bench, we only define the inputs and not the outputs. G dependent on our depending on our input the outputs vary by themselves thus we can verify whether the input and output are coherent or as per our requirements so let me initialize our inputs as both zero. Then in a test bench we can use a special statement called weight. Let me wait for 10 nanoseconds. 10 nanoseconds is defined by ns, 10 space ns and weight is always always followed by a keyword for wait for x nanoseconds will make the simulation software that is isim wait for 10 nanoseconds so here we have initialized our inputs 
we can add and comment there then a pause for 10 nanosecond has been taken then let me change the state of the inputs to 1 0 maybe then again put a wait statement then maybe 0 1 any permutation and combination can be done depending on the user right now I am showing all the combinations possible that is 0 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 1 Lastly, lastly, I'll put both the inputs as one one. Once that is done, we need to perform an important step here so as to change to the simulation view on the top left hand side corner an implementation radio button has been clicked so we need to change that to simulation once that is done you will see the test bench already created over here we need to double click on simulate behavioral this will ask us to save the test bench we'll say yes so we'll first save the test bench and then double click on simulate behavioral this should ideally open up a new window wherein the simulation commands that we have given are executed as expected we got our simulation window ready here so we zoom out of the window such that the scroll bar down here gets to some manageable size so here we can clearly see that after the first hundred nanosecond delay which was defined in our test bench already by this particular statement then we have initialized both the switches to zero so once both switches have been initialized to zero for the first 10 nanoseconds as you can see here in this time frame from 100 nanoseconds to 110 nanoseconds clearly then we have made switch 0 as 1 and switch 1 remained at a digital value 0 so as soon as this edge of switch 0 came that is when switch 0 shifted from being 0 to 1 we can clearly see that LED 0 also became 1 the value of switch 0 and LED 0 are 1 and the same as expected by our program so we are actually controlling LED 0 using switch 0 after 10 nanoseconds of switch 0 being 1 we again made it 0 and again 1 correspondingly we can see the effect on LED 0 switch 1 was initially 1 for 100 to 120 nanosecond correspondingly LED 1 was 0 then switch 1 was made 1 continuously LED 1 also remained 1 continuously this is what we had expected from our code and this is exactly what our code is doing so using the ISIM simulator tool we could verify that our code is working according to our needs thus the first simulation lab is completed